All right, welcome to a very special treatment series today, and we're in my neighbor's garage for a bit of garage physio. This is Millen, and we are dealing with his knee, and to show you what is going on, we're going to show you what's happening with his knee, his problems, and how we're going to fix or help him through this stage um, to get it better. So, with his knee, he has got a lateral meniscal tear. Now, Millen, if you show us your movement. So he has problems squatting down. So you try and show me how far you can go. That's about it. That's about it. Now, when he gets there, where's the pain, Millen? Around the odd side. Around there. Yeah. So his lateral meniscal tear, which he's had two MRIs on. The first MRI he had before surgery, before a meniscectomy, and that was in 2017, That's and right. he had a lateral tear then. In 2019, he hasn't had surgery yet for this one, he went for an MRI and he's got the same thing. So he's got another tear, but he's also got a, so he's got a horizontal tear and a radial tear. So there's two things going on there and a bit of a problem. He's also got some chondral loss, so down to the bone in some areas. Now what that's done, or what the knee's done, is it's got a synovitis. So that whole thing, I don't know if you can see that, but he's all swollen up around there. He's got pretty good quads, but they're turning off a little bit. So try and stand on your right leg for him, Alan, and try and squat down on that. Now, he's not, not too bad control. He's all right. Does that hurt? No, not yet. Not yet. That's not hurting me. Now, at work, he has to be on his feet all day. He has to be up and down ladders, all sorts of things. So for him, he needs his knee functioning really, really well. And what we've got to try and do is try and improve the range, get the strength better, get the swelling down, and then maybe he might go for cortisone. Okay, so the reason we're in Millen's garage is he's my next door neighbor. So, and his garage is much tighter than mine, so I'm showing you from his garage, not mine. Now, with his knee, I wanna show you some range of movement issues he's got. So, when you have a problem like Millen's, where you've got synovitis, a meniscal tear, you start losing range in the joint. Now, as you can see, if you look at his left one, he can get that right down, zero degrees, no problems. Have a look at this one. Come and have a look at this. See that's, he's really struggled there. Does that hurt? Yeah. Yeah. So when I try and push that close like that, I, see I can get my hand right down that's, and it's still hurting. So that's very bouncy. And what that means is when that joint's closing, okay, he's got maybe a couple of things going there. The meniscal tear is probably jamming it a bit, which will hurt, but the swelling in there, because he's got a sign of ice, just blocks it. It just, there's just no way it's gonna shut. But with this sort of thing, because he's had it for so long, the capsule and all the soft tissue and it gets so tight in here, it also restricts his range. Because remember, this is a knee joint, so it's got a slide, glide, roll mechanism. So when it shuts, it doesn't just shut and shut like a joint like that. It slides and shuts like that. So when I push him down, if he's got soft tissue problems here, he won't get it all the way sliding so we're going to help with the sliding the rolling part and try and get his range better in extension and flexion now if you look at this part here he's actually not he's not too bad today he was a little bit worse last week we couldn't really get him better so we, we did some treatment the other week and it's got a little better but he's regressed a bit again because of that fluid but we're going to try and get that one better as well now the first thing we're going to do to try and loosen up is a bit of soft tissue work now i like doing this before you get into the mobs because if you can get some soft tissue work done, it does desensitize it quite a bit. It also helps sort of warm up the joint a bit so we can then stretch it out and that'll get some range. Now, this also makes the client feel a lot better in the joint. Oh, and we can work out. So when I get around here, there's some fluid around this side. Come on, have a look at this here. There's some fluid around this side in here and he's really sore right in that joint line. Now, Obviously, I don't want to push too hard in there, but we want to get a little bit of almost massage, if you like, through there to try and desensitize some of those tissues, loosen up some of those soft tissues. So when he bends and straightens, there's less resistance of all the soft tissues. So I really like doing this one for a little bit before we start mobilizing his knee to get his range back. Okay, so once we've loosened him up a little bit, and he's desensitized a bit, then we're going to go for an AP glide, anterior posterior glide, of his tibia. So the best way to block the femur and get in there, we need to get in a bit of a range where if I look at him, he can handle. Is that sore? Yeah. Yeah. So when you you want to try and do it as sort of as pain-free as you possibly can. 
So I might have just pad out his knee a little bit. Get him to a bit more flexion, because the reason he's been a bit sore is because he's in too much extension. Be it better? Yeah. Yeah. So when he was before, he was too close to that joint being too tight. So now I can mobilize in about sort of 10 degrees or 15 degrees flexion. And this is just to get this joint moving. We've got to try and stretch out the tissues a bit, try and improve that stiffness. So mechanically, he can get that joint bending and straightening a little better, which will just drop down his pain. It's probably not going to change his swelling a little bit. Now, that may take a bit of time. Um, and the problem with his, you know, if his swelling continues despite physio, despite stretching, despite being kind to it, despite strengthening it up really, really well, if it's still swelling and it still continues, then that might need a cortisone injection. However, we're going to try and do everything we can before that because that's sort of his wild card before because he's going to have to rest after that for a week or so. So we're going to try and do as much physio as we can before that ever happens. So here's the PA of the femur, or AP of the tibia if you like. So this one is where you're going to get a bit of movement that way, okay, which really helps with closing the joint. And again, I've got to look at him and make sure that he's not wincing at me. You okay with that? Yep. Um, and this will really help improve that range. Sometimes you have to really stabilize this and get in there and loosen up. As long as that doesn't hurt, this is going to help improve his extension range a little bit. And I like swapping from doing AP to AP. So just swapping that towel straight in from tibia to femur and just keep repeating that. So that's our extension. And now we're going to do a little bit of flexion. But we're just going to check that extension range for a start. You feel that clunk in there? He had a bit of a clunk in there as well, which is that meniscus. Now already he's a little bit better. What's that feeling like? Yeah. So he's got a little bit better range in there, which means, hey, we've got some extension. So flexion. Now with flexion, what I like to do is use that same towel and prop him under the foot like that so he doesn't go anywhere. Now what you can do is put in a little bit of a hold there as well because we want to get this movement of this kneecap and this knee I should say going that way so I need that movement of the tibia so that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go that way in line with that joint to try and improve how much range. Now that's going to help him when he squats down. He's going to get a bit better range because not, listen, not all of his pain and all of that loss of range is a meniscal tear and swelling. Some of it is, okay, but some of it is also because he spent the last week at work, up and down ladders and all those sorts of things, and it's taken a bit of a battering, and it's tightened up. So he's also been a long car journey. How long was the car journey? Uh, four hours. Four hours in a car, and that's, as you know, if you've had you know knee stiffness, you know that's not very much fun. So. The soft tissues have tightened up, which has restricted his range, which makes him feel like, oh, my problem's getting worse. It's not. It's just that the knee's getting tighter. And if we can loosen that up, then it's less sore. He's more likely to do his rehab, which is going to get it stronger, which at the end of the day, it's about if he can get this joint more mobile, stronger, then his pain's going to be less, and he's going to be able to do more. And then if this whole thing is going to heal up, and if the meniscus is going to heal over time, yeah, and it's going to take a, if it's going to heal and no surgery, it's going to take a long time to heal. <laughs> but so therefore, he has to be able to keep it loose. He's got to be able to keep it, you know, as less pain as possible, so he can get through that phase, get through the strengthening, um, and so he, when it starts healing, he comes out the other side and it's strong. Okay, and having the strength too also helps him get through that part and, and get it healing. It doesn't make it heal, but it just helps them through that, that journey. And that's what we're trying to do is trying to, you know, we, we're not against surgery, but we're trying to stop him having to have a second surgery on it. We see if this thing heals by itself and help him through. Okay, so now we've got a bit more range and I've got rid of that towel. I can actually, when he bends and flexes, I'm gliding as he goes. So this is like a more of a, Mobilization with movement, you don't mind that? Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Okay. So, which is a classic sort of meniscal problem. And a lot of people have blocked flexion, but the blocked extension is the real kicker. And if you've got blocked extension, your quads are going to keep turning off all the time. Some people can deal with blocked flexion because they don't need to squat down or they don't need to go any further than sitting down. But Miller needs a bit more than that. 
but the blocked extension is the one yeah is the one we really got to make sure he always gets because if you can get your extension back the full extension you're going to be able to activate your quads a little bit better you're right with that yeah well i can get that right up to full range i think see so watch this yeah he's right in there which is good now i'm not even going to do his mcmurray's because we know he's got a missile tear we don't need to go and aggravate it anymore but let's check his extension have a look at that again just have a little bit of loosen up in here he's still a little bit bouncy but he's not too bad just try and straighten that down yeah it's getting a bit better he's getting almost zero but it's a bit sore then so we've got a bit more range so let's check out his range now so have a stand up again for him oh. <laughs> so let's have a look at this again so if you go down into as slow a squat as you can hey look at that much better nice so he's got a bit more range it's still sore there right he's still got a bit of soreness in there yeah. but you can see how he can squat down he can hold it it's genuine he can actually mm. definitely hold that down now i don't advise him doing that long term at the moment trying to get down there as far as he can because he's just going to pinch it but that's going to be more comfortable during the day he's going to be less sore during the day and if you can maintain that with some stretches and some strengthening work throughout this week then you'll find that hopefully by the next time i treat him it's a little bit better and we keep going forward so next time next garage session if you like is going to work on his strengthening work we'll see you then